What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. We are back for the review of Love After Lockup. This is season two, episode 20, Dope Spoons and Second Honeymoons. Y'all, this episode was crazy as hell. It wasn't a whole lot going on. It was a couple of good points here and there. I'm going to try not to make this review too long because it wasn't a whole lot. You know how we TV do. I'm thinking that, you know, it was really going to be popping. It was going to be something to it. But we TV like to build us up and then cut us off and then make us wait until the whole next fucking episode. But that's all right. So this next episode better be popping. It better be coming with it because I thought it's a, a lot more shit than what happened was going to happen. But anyways, it was cute. So let's go ahead and get into the bullshit, y'all. So Andrea and Lamar, they're going to Lamar's brother's house. This is Andrea's first time being around his brother and his people. And they having a little kickback at the heart, at the kickback party at the house. You know, a little drinking, a little smoking. You know, they over there at the house chilling, whatever, right? Now, Andrea's excited. You know what I'm saying? She's like, well, what kind of person goes to uh, somebody's house for the first time and doesn't bring a housewarming gift? Oh, she's so cute. Look, cute Mormon Andrea. She's so goddamn cute. But as soon as they get over there to the house, she walked through the door. First thing, she smells weed. That doja, that doty wody hitting her right in the goddamn face. And she like, this making me sick. Like, it's all in my stomach. Like, ooh, ooh, I can't even breathe, y'all. That's just too much. I, ooh, I, I can't even do it. Now, coming from someone who knows people who are weed connoisseurs. I'm guessing because they were in LA, they wasn't smoking no regular shit. So I kind of believe her when she says she couldn't breathe and the shit was making her sick. Cause she don't know nothing, she ain't about that life. So all it probably took was a little smell of something and it probably, it would've had a laid on her ass. She ain't built for that kind of shit, right? So she kind of gets to criticize and is like, you know what I'm saying? And so everybody in the house kind of looking at her like, well, dang, you know, my bad. I apologize. You know, I, I didn't think it was going to be a problem. And she was like, well, why would you invite me over here? Why would you want me to compromise my morals and who I am? Because, you know, you want me to be around your family and, you know, I don't like this and y'all know I don't like this and this is the kind, you know, this isn't me. And, you know, his brother is like, I apologize. You know, I'm sorry. I'll put it out. And so she gets up she leaves out the house because she mad you know she like well what well, why would you i mean she's basically she's pissed off because they in the house smoking weed and drinking i don't know what the hell she thought she was going to you know your husband is a loped out gangster set tripping banging where you thought y'all was gonna go to the four seasons the ritz carson like no y'all was going to the hood to the kickback and they finna do what the homies do they finna smoke and they finna fucking drink but then again but, you know, Lamar was just so excited that she had agreed to go out and be around his people. I don't think he was anticipating for her to act the way that she did or for her to react around her people the way that she did. But it got to the point to where it was it was embarrassing to him. You know what I'm saying? To where he was like, fucking, let's just go. Let's just leave. Like, we ain't got to be here. Because he was like, ultimately, at the end of the day, I want to be with my family. I want to be with my wife and my kids. So, of course, we came together. We going to leave together. And that's what a real nigga supposed to do i don't give a fuck we came together we gonna leave together now if the bitch want to be mad sit in the car that's one thing and then we can leave when we ready but um we leaving together we came together we leaving together and i commend him for that right so they in the car driving back on the way home and Andrea's like, you know, this is exactly why I need a sister wife. So she can go to the hood and do the hood rat things that he want to do. Drinking and smoking and I, I'm not about that life. And she's serious, y'all. You know, she she's very serious. She's like, I, I'd like to have a sister wife. And you know what? Lamar might not be too, too you know, he, he might be all right with that. You know what I'm saying? But then again, it's rules to that shit. Lamar, don't even do it. Don't even get into it, right? And so she just says she feels like he's changing. And what it is is, girl, you knew this man when he was locked up in prison, right? When he was in a pen for 10, three hots in the cot. Between the hours of here and here, you can talk on the phone at this time of day and you can go visit on these days. Now that he's out and he's a free man, he gets to spread his loped out wings, right? So he ain't going to be the same nigga that he was when he was locked up. A lot of niggas do that jail talk when they locked up. Ladies, you feel me? You already know. It's a sister right now. Sister, white girl, Asian girl, Hispanic girl, 
pink girl, green girl, purple girl, we all done dealt with a nigga in jail or something like that before and they done ran that damn jail talk on you. No, no. That's why we we get saved and we upgrade and we get us real niggas. Anywho, so, <laughs> ooh, I almost gave myself whiplash doing that. But, you know, they arguing about the whatever. And so she just basically like, I feel like you changing and and you you rather be out there on the streets. And I thought you were going to leave this gangster gangbanger life alone. And he's like, if you don't like L.A., if you don't like none of my friends, you don't like none of my family, you don't like nothing that they do, you don't like that, don't like nothing that I do, why are you here? She wants him to go to Utah so he can see how her life was in Utah and see the life that she left. Because like they said, they both are arguing that they made sacrifices. Listen, you married. I've been married for eight years in, the mar in a relationship for 12 years. That's what the fuck you do. You sacrifice. You sacrifice a lot of shit you don't want a goddamn sacrifice, but that's, you, that's what you do. That's just what the fuck you do. So on this next episode, they supposed to be going to Utah, see how the Mormons live, we gonna see what happened from that. Move right along. Whoo, motherfucking Scott and Lizzie, y'all. Okay, so it picks up where they left off. They still on the beach or whatever. This is the, the date that Lizzie said she was taking Scott on, right? But she took his ass to a picnic on the beach. But like I said, the bitch brought the bread. She bought the wine. She bought the sandwich meat. Bitch, I paid for it. I took your ass on a goddamn date. So while they're on a date, this motherfucker Scott pulls out a box and basically proposes to her. She opens up the box and it's a $4,000 ring in there. He's like, basically, you can take it how you want to take it. It could be a promise ring, a friendship ring, engagement ring, like whatever. Like, Scott, I thought she was broke. I thought she was fucking broke. So you still tricking off to this bitch and y'all wasn't even together. You had reserve trick for her like wow she she had layaway tricking and she didn't even know it so you done bought this bitch a ring right of course you know lizzie don't want to marry goddamn scott that's her trick she don't want to marry this nigga but scott don't know that right so she tells him like look what does this mean we're like whoa pump your brain slow down you move too fast what does this mean he gets mad right scott get big mad he get the ring gets it and goes and throws it in the ocean because he big mad. Lizzie asks, you know what? Fine. Takes off her little swim wrap that she had on, goes out and runs out to the ocean because she finna go get that goddamn four grand, uh, four grand. The water washes the box back up kind of to the shore, right? Lizzie and Scott both got their dumb asses out there in the ocean wrestling on the damn beach getting the box. Finally, Scott gets the box. He's out there on the ocean crying and shit. Lizzie like, look, you know, let's just start over, okay? We're just gonna start over. They hug it out, they kiss it out or whatever, right? So then they get back over to Scott's house, right? Lizzie's just, you know, looking around, looking through shit. She looks in his drawer in his kitchen and says, what is this? This is a dope spoon. What are you doing with a dope spoon? Now, she says that Scott told her that he dabbled, you know, with crack cocaine or whatever back, back in his 20s, but he hasn't done anything since then. Lizzie, like, nigga, you can't fuck with me. I used to shoot up this shit. This is the kind of spoon that I use when I would shoot my shit up. Now, I kind of believe her. I mean, I absolutely believe her. She know what the fuck she's talking about. But as far as the spoon, like Lizzie is super manipulative with Scott. She know how to play Scott. She picks these arguments and shit with him, knowing that Scott going to be like a puppy dog. And he going to go running behind her ass to try to give her whatever it is that she wants. So I don't know if she really actually thought it was a dope spoon that she found or if that was her way of picking an argument with him so she can kind of reel his ass back in. I don't know, on the next episode, she claims that she's gonna take a drug test, if he'll take a drug test about, I don't know, child. They got all my damn nerves with this goddamn, moving on from they ass too. Brittany and Marcelino. So, they're at the house talking, and Brittany brings it up to Marcelino that she wants Sasha to be the goddaughter of their, I mean, the godmother of their daughter, Zoila. Marcelino, now he was on asshole level 10, again, hey, it's Marcelino. We knew sooner or later the asshole was going to come back, right? He does have valid points. Like, how can you ask her to be a godmom when she's going to be in prison? She ain't going to be there no way. 
should something happen and she needs to step in as a godmom to take care of her. But then again, I feel Brittany in the point that that's her best friend and she wants um, Sasha to feel like she's a part of the family, right? So they both got valid points. But then again, I can't lie. I'm kind of leaning more towards Marcelino. Like, okay, I understand you want her to be got her god mom totally get that that's your best friend that's your ride or die bitch right but at the same time what if something happens to me and you she locked up for 10 plus years who gonna watch zoila what's gonna happen then right so he goes so now we see why marcelino's is a mama's boy mm -hmm, i already knew it so he goes and he talks to his mom mama is completely against sasha being a god mama to zoila as well and mama's kind of like a battery in marcelino's back in the fact of like no you need to let her know that no that's not right she doesn't need to do that i don't agree with that you need to let her know this blah 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 right he also tells his mama that he wants to go and have a conversation with tito because Although Tito has full custody of um, Brittany's son, Gio, Gio is always with them. Now, this scene that he's filming with his mom, they're at the park, right? And he's got both the baby girl and the baby boy. And so Gio calls him stepdad. Like, I mean, not stepdad, but he calls him dad. Like, their relationship is so cute. Like, you, you can completely and totally understand why Marcelino wants to get full custody of Gio because he's like his daddy. But at the same time, he got a daddy. Just saying, that's just my two cents. Don't nobody come for me on that. That's just my two cents. Um, so, goddamn, Marcelino ass is in the van at this point, and he pissed off. He's so pissed off, he about to flip the minivan over because he like, fuck this shit. I'm going to go have a man-to-man -man conversation with Tito because that's the only way I feel like any real issues are going to get solved. It needs to be a conversation man-to-man -man between he and I because I understand completely what Gio can go through with his father not being there, and he needs to understand that. Marcelino, Brittany already told you she had that. She already told you that is my child's father, that's my ex. I know how to work that angle. You don't know this man. He's a Juno Mexican. You don't know if he got a gun. You don't know if he got a knife. You don't know what kind of bullshit this man can pull out his ass and pull on you. So you need to fall back and just be a stepdaddy. Be support, be atmosphere, but let Britney handle that. But I am excited to see what's going to happen next week because it look like they're going to knuckle up and throw them things. And both of them look like they're scary as hell. But I'm here for it. I'm ready to see it. I'm going to bring a review to you. Move right along from them. Megan, Michael, and Sarah, y'all. Lord, this fucking trio here. So... Sarah is on her way to the hospital. Her manly homegirl is taking her there because she is getting ready to get induced to have her baby girl. She says Mike told her that he wants somebody to FaceTime her vagina while she is giving birth if he's not able to make it there for the birth. Nigga, are you fucking crazy? Meanwhile, Mike asks is... When he took off in the car, he drove down to his P.O.'s office to see if he could get a travel voucher to go and see the baby be born. P.O. was like, nigga, you can't leave your house, let alone the state. Is you fucking crazy? Tell your ass on back home for I knock your ass up for being stupid right now. No. So, y'all, Sarah's super emotional, and I feel bad for her. She's super emotional because she's saying this is the second time she's going to be going through this pregnancy alone, which I don't think she's alone. Her manly homegirl is in the background somewhere, but meaning that Mike isn't going to be there to experience his children being born again for the second time. Meanwhile, Mike at home, he big mad. He throwing shit off the porch, kicking shit because he mad. He feels like... The system is keeping him from being a father to his kids. Y'all, he said that. He said that. The system is preventing him from being a father to his kids. Nigga, what is in the Kool-Aid you drinking? So, y'all, Sarah eventually has her baby. She has a little girl named Rain. She's really, really cute. She FaceTimes Michael, let Michael know, hey, your baby's here. He starts fake crying. I don't, you know, I don't feel sorry for him. I don't feel bad for him. I don't fall for none of this fake ass crying that he doing. I don't believe none of that. Nigga, if you really gave a damn about your kids, you'd have been there in the first doggone place when when she, you first found out she was pregnant. You wouldn't have done nothing else to get your monkey ass back locked up. So I don't feel bad for him at all. So, meanwhile, Megan is back in Fort Worth. She's sad and depressed because she ain't heard from Mike since they got into it. And he told her to go on about her business when she told him that she had kissed his friend, right? So she's sitting at home. Get a call. Well, don't she get a text 
from Mike. The first text that he sends her, since they haven't had a conversation since Flint, he sends her pictures of his new baby. Then, Megan, I'm really trying hard not to call you dumb, Megan. Megan gonna say, I'm trying to look and see if I see the baby in, and like see him and the baby, because I really don't want to believe that that's his baby. But yeah, that, yeah, she looks like him. She's cute, yeah, she's cute. Bitch, Megan. Oh, I just want to hug you. I just want to hug you and tell you it'll be okay. I just want to hug you like an old school mom and just rock with you like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause girl, you just so, oh, I don't want to call you dumb. I don't want to say that. I don't want to say you dumb. You're doing very dumb like things. So Mike calls her and he's like, yeah, so did you get the pictures? And she's like, yeah, she's cute. He's like, okay, so I want to know, what, what, like, what do you think? She's like, look at I mean, I, I, I don't know what to think. My boyfriend just had a baby with his wife. Like, what the fuck am I supposed to think? Like, what does this mean for you and your wife? That's what the fuck I need to know. And he's like, right now, I'm just focused on being a daughter to that beautiful baby girl. So that means that you, you cutting both of their ass off right now so you can focus on being on your kids, so you can focus on the other bitches that you got on the side, right? That's what that means. Mike, I, I, I can't, ooh, he make my edges itch. He make my edges itch. I can't. Moving on from Mike, y'all, I can't. All right, y'all, so Clinton, his goddess Tracy, they in Viva Las Vegas, and they ready to fuck some shit up, right? So he's feeling guilty because, you know, he told his daddy that he got this little side chick named Stephanie that he been sexting or whatever, right? And so he feels a little bit guilty about that. So he's real irritable. Like, everything that Tracy says, like, he's just he's just irritable. He's in a grumpy-ass mood or whatever, right? And so she's excited. She want to take pictures. She want to do all kind of fun shit. But this nigga still got PTSD from the last time they were somewhere. He, like, don't mention nothing about, you know, like, cause she say, um, yeah, I'm ready to go see this hotel with this um jacuzzi pool that you got me he was like yeah you remember what happened last time we had a jacuzzi pool she like look we ain't gonna bring up this old shit like that nigga got ptsd like for real from real from the last time when they was out and he it's like flashbacks like he can't take that so they're checking into the hotel right and so like i said she's excited she's taking pictures different selfies this and the other so right before they get ready to walk into the hotel room she gets his phone to take another selfie of them as she's taking a selfie a text message from the home girl comes through right hold on let me tell these kids to shut the hell up all right y'all i'm back they act like it's you know kids i got my son i got my nephew it's WWE up in that bitch. Anyways, so like I said, she's taking another little selfie of them or whatever, right? And as she takes the selfie, a message come through from homegirl Stephanie. And she like, hold on, wait a minute. Who is Stephanie? Sexy, I can't wait. Nigga, who the fuck? She, she snaps. She snaps. Clint like, no, give me my phone, give me my phone. She snaps. She gets pissed off. They start arguing. She run in the bathroom, lock herself up in the bathroom. She got the phone. I'm thinking she finna flush the phone down the goddamn toilet or something the way she was going off. So, girl, it ends up going off from there. Again, I thought it was going to be more than that, but you know how we TV do. They build us up for some bullshit, and then they, they leave us hanging with a cliffhanger just like that. But y'all, that was the end of the episode. It wasn't a whole lot that went on. Like I said, there was some good points to it here and there. Nevertheless, I'm hoping that you enjoyed this review. Let me know what you thought about it. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. And y'all have a great weekend. <laughs> what's up y'all do me a favor and share the video please make sure to subscribe to my channel let me know what you think and um hit that notification button so you will be up to date when i upload my latest videos i have